Well, I'm going to try not to shoot up my nose. First signal, they've harrowed my wonderful Roman field, so I'm going to have to make the most of it because they're probably going to plant it or do something to it really quick. First find of the day, looking like a Roman, tiny little one. Let's have a look at it closer. So there it is. Not normally going to be a French coin, kind of small Roman coin, that one. Yeah, in the pocket it goes, we'll find out later. Well, I've got a nice signal down here, but I've seen an edge, so I don't think it's a Roman. I'm right on the Roman spot. It's a Roman coin signal. It's a flash of bronze, but it's looking a bit too thin. So let's go down, have a look, see what we got. And that's where it is. And you can see that that's looking, but you see it's too thin. And that's going to be Napoleon Toir, yeah. Napoleon Toir, what are you doing on my Roman bit? But anyway, 1860, not Roman, but look at that. That was all six inches of stubble. Well, actually only this morning. And now oh, it's perfect conditions, yay. Oh, by the way, I'm not sponsored by Garrett, but they could. Well, it's really blowing, and this new camera, the Pocket 2, actually has a windbreak, a kind of gadgety thing you put on your collar, but I don't want to be filming and get that all wrong and get no sound. But anyway, so we're going instead. Anyway, I think I might have found a bit of a Roman coin. Have a look, see what you think. So that was a tiny signal. Oh dear, the wind is whipping. The fabulous Roman field has been harrowed and flat and brilliant so I'm gonna find lots and lots of Romans after finding two with six inches of stubble and of course guess what found nothing anyway getting back to the car an amigo of mine who's trainee amigo metal detectorist has found this little thing which I think is rather interesting have a look so that's what it is and I think this is a coin weight or it could actually be an ingot but I think it's quite likely to be a, a weight because you see it looks like far marks on the back there but we'll find out later found the signal in broad terms and then he did the rest because you know when you're starting out you get all these crazy iron signals you want to dig and then you dig forever not find anything and then you find a lump of iron it's most discouraging but you know find a good signal and then we can um, practice on retrieval Well, I'm learning this camera and I'm trying not to do nice long monologues shooting up my nose. I don't know whether that succeeded because I can't see what I'm doing on this. A little, little, there's a little screen there which is so small and I have to look into the sun to look good. Oh yes. And uh, so I can't see a thing. No, not a thing. I'm coming up dry. Been out here for about an hour. It's quite warm. And I've got one find and it's a button. But that's it. Anyway, have a look. So here's the Butoni. And that's it. Tons and tons of iron signals, but nothing Roman coiny. Now, I'm definitely on a lean patch here, <laughs> but you know, you've got to push on. And I just can't believe it. It's again, you get two coins, you're going through 90% six inch stubble, and you think, well, when I've got this stubble gone, I'll be able to find lots of lovely Roman coins that are out of range. And then they clear the stubble, you don't find anything. They're up there, I think, aren't they? Yes, they are. So let's go up there and find them. I've got a juicy signal down here. Could be a bottle top. Oh, yes, we've been finding them. But it's a really, really big signal. It's a signal like a Napoleon Toir or a big Roman coin. It's an 8990 down there. Oh, boy, I've been on here for hours since the last Romans and not found a sausage. So this might be a sausage down here. Let's have a look. So this is live dig time because... It's such a big old signal. I'm expecting great things. And that's probably out, but as I'm in juggle mode, I want to keep that, keep the going back to the forwards down. Well, pinpoint of time.
and there it is whatever that is and from here that would look like a sturtius but it's most likely a top of something or a lead weight hold on right here it is well is that a bottom of it yes it is Because that is a sturtius size. You look at that and you go, there's patterns there. But of course there's no patterns there. So this is a a lead bung or something. A lead top. Well, they weren't making lead tops recently. So I'm saying that's really old. Could well be Roman. Could well be not. That's a gigantic lumpo of lead. Let's not like it. In the pocket it goes. Well, look at that. Good old spindle well. Button in a spindle well. And a big lead lumpo. Actually, which is probably rather quite a nice thing. But anyway, so far, one and a half hours in blazing temperatures. And that's what I've got. Down here, I've got an 87. It's got to be a coin or at least some sort of nice artifact. So we're going to go down and we're going to dig it live because I think, well, I found so little, it's worthwhile. So it's under there and it should be in that spoonful. I'm going to put it over there and I'm going to dig another one. Oh, I don't like that sound. Well, should be in that. Not in there, it should be in there. Nope. And that's a coin, by the looks of it. It looks like a thin one. So it looks like a Louis the whatnot. <laughs> we'll be seeing in a sec, if that fly don't eat me. So that's the coin. Don't drop the coin. Okay, looking like a button now. Not a button. Not looking like a Roman though. Could be a Roman. Could be, very eroded one. It's almost thick enough. But when we give it a clean, we'll find out. I'm guessing that's a double turn one. But anyway. This one on some ground I haven't been on before. Well, got a, what, what I would say was an iffy signal actually. Much lower than I thought this should be. But anyway, I found something really nice. Have a look. There you go. It's a bronze bung. A big old bung. Keg barrel tap. Yeah, look at that, rather nice. Don't think it's terribly old. Well, I mean, it's old enough, but, you know, it's not ancient because it's very symmetrical. But anyway, in the pocket that one goes, a barrel tap. This is looking like a lead token. There you go. It looks like it might have a pattern on it. Looks a little bit too flat for being a shot musket ball. So I'm reckoning that's a lead token right by that barrel tap. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, I walked miles up there. I walked all around and around. I thought, I've got everything. And I'm down in this zone here. I did find an amazing roaming key down here. And I have found one Sesterces over there 10 years ago and one Sesterces over there five years ago. But anyway, I think I've got another, but I don't know yet for sure. It could be a bottle top. You know that one in the last video. Well, let's have a look at it. So that's what it is. And you see it's got that edge. It's got that Roman coin edge. It's got loads of stuff on it. Don't rub the Roman. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, you can see the crown. The sun crown. There, that's the sun crown. So that's the bust side. 
and on this side it's going to be the not bus side the reverse with some queen or whatever not queen goddessy thing some personification of some Rome's religious significance and you can see they were standing up holding something there so that's probably I mean it could be an ass it could be a Dupondus what's left of one but it is a Roman coin and after two hours in the blazing heat I found that Roman coin and you know I've obviously worked a lot of this out because I have got a lot of Roman coins out here and this is south and as I say just a few bits and bobs down here but most of the bobs and bits are up there but nothing up there but anyway we got it oh, oh yes oh yes Roman Well, there's probably not another Roman down here, but it's a blooming good signal and it's blooming close to the last one. So let's dig it live. And it's a big old 85. So let me get out of the light. Well, I'm gonna have to pinpoint this one. Well, it's in here. Probably it there, I think. Maybe not. Yep, that's it. And it is a bottle top. Yay! Well, we must be due for a car about now because I'm filming. <laughs> oh, anyway, exhausted. Two and a half hours at centigrade. Anyway, it's good for my health <laughs> if I survive. So. We finally found, well not finally, we found a few a few days ago, but oh boy, we're bashing this field just to find the odd one now. But I suppose this is just harrowed from last year's plough and plant. So I'm guessing they're going to plough again, and then they're going to put corn on here. Then I won't be able to get in, and then I have to plough it for the wheat. And then maybe I'll get in then, and then it'll be around a two-year cycle, and back to having all this ploughed around, and maybe some more stuff popped up. But we're going to be back here, because there's... I know there's Roman right down south, or as I call south, below the Roman lamppost, but it's, you know, was thick and fast above it in that sort of area there, but a smatters around here. And I got smatters today, so I think I'm going to concentrate down here, see if I can pick up a few more bits. And you know, Roman silver, yes please. But anyway, none of that from here just yet. In fact, hardly any tiny coins at all either. Just the big asses and the even bigger Duponduses and the even bigger Sesterciuses. But I'm not complaining. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and like. And, oh boy, do I need coffee. Oh yes, metaphorical. And from buy me a coffee too. Because that's really what keeps me going. And those that send me that, thank you very much. The reason you're seeing this and all the other people are seeing this is because of you. Thank you. See you again soon. Bye-bye. This is my excited face, my excited face. Oh yes, there's no doubt about this one. It was really pretty much on the surface. It was a tiny signal. In fact, it was a shotty signal, but I've not been getting anything on this particular field. But I dug it and take a look what it is. It's fabulous. My Roman field is cleared, but it's lots of stubble on it and the ground is gonna be rock hard. But I've got to have a go on it just to see how the new dais performs even with like many inches of stubble. And I've got a horrible feeling that when I find a signal, I won't be able to dig it. But anyway, I'm just gonna give it a look, see what I've got here. And oh, the sun is beating down. Oh yes, I won't be out here for long. But anyway, let's see what we can find. I'm gonna go straight to my hot patch and see if anything gets a signal there. Now this is my excited face, my excited face. I'm by the Roman lamppost back there, see it? There it is. And I think this is a road from wherever it is to wherever it is. And it's just a road, a Roman road, because I've found more at the top there over the years. But I've got to say, in here, you know what it is. 
Oh, I think I know what it is. Oh, yes, 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 yes. It's very hot and the stubble is deep, but I still picked out it was a 92. So I think Deus 2 is going to find me more Roman here, even though I've hammered it for years and years and years. Anyway, it's in here. Want to look? I, I only know it's a thick bit of bronze and it's got to be a Roman coin being where it is. So anyway, let's have a look at it. And there it is. I've got it. And that's the other side of it. So that is a Roman coin because it's it's thick. That's how they come out. Thick, not thin like the medieval stuff or the Renaissance stuff, however you want to call it. Anyway, let's see if I can rub a bit of that dirt off. Don't rub the coin! No, it don't want to come off. I'm not going to make it. But that is a bit of a Roman coin. And it's probably an ass. Um, or maybe something smaller. And it probably won't have anything on it. Because the stuff out of here is well eroded. But I'll use my new technique and see if I can bring out any detail. But anyway, that's wonderful. So it would have been a lot, there's way more to come with the Deus 2 when they actually harrow the field or plow it or whatever they do or the blooming stubble just becomes feeble with age and I can just, you know, plow over it. And, um, but anyway, I'm gonna go up here a bit more and then if I don't find anything, I'm going. I haven't been here long, but you know, I've got to get my detecting muscles back. It's very, very hot and I'm on a fast. I'm fasting every other day and I'm losing a lot of weight. So it's working for me. So anyone out there who wants to lose weight, I can tell you every other day fast. Eat on one day, don't eat the next day. Eat the day after, don't eat. And then watch your weight, maybe get some electrolytes in you. Be careful and all that. But it, whoa boy, does it work. It's the best thing I've ever done in dieting because, you know, you feel pretty good after you've got used to the days off. You feel relatively, you know, high on those days and the weight falls off a pound a day. For that so you know I've lost 12 pounds in two weeks which is a lot you know scarily a lot actually and um, you know and then you just eat normally on the other day and it seems to work so anyway I'm moving around the field lighter which is really really good because you know you reach a stage when you're so heavy it makes life very difficult anyway enough of that I've got a Roman yes this is my excited face this is my excited face I'm back to the Roman lamppost and I'm about oh I don't know 20 feet away from where I found that a Roman ass of Antoninus Pius. Could be Hadrian, but I think it's Antoninus Pius. I mean, there's not much of it to see, but it looks like Antoninus Pius. Anyway, I've got another one down here. I didn't think it was going to be Roman because it's a 78 signal, which is, uh, but it's a big bronze coin by the looks of it. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It could be anything. Now, we're going to go down and have a look at it together. Well, I'm not getting it the way I want it. So I'm going to have to do it manually. So, there it is, and that is it. Oh, that is definitely Roman. And it's actually gonna have some detail on it. Don't rub the Roman. Only gently. But you see there's a head there. And on the other side, we're gonna have some figures. But I'm not going to do anything more than that. I probably will actually, but... Oh, oh, ah, uh, is that a crown on the back of his head? So I've given it a gentleness of rub. I'm not going to do anything more to it than that. I think that's a crown there. So that's that way around, isn't it? So we'll find out who this is later. We certainly will. This is the nicest condition coin I've got out of this field for a very long time indeed. Very, very happy with that. Very, very happy. <laughs> oh, yes. Just over there, about 20 feet. And the stubble here, six inch stubble. So, you know, there's way more here. She said cursing it. 
So when they've actually ploughed it up or flattened it down, there's more to come. So that's really, really great. So I should go now, really, but I'm not. I'm going to push on and see if I can find some more. So that was a nice hunt. Not long. Hour. Only two finds, one rubbish and one lovely Roman coin. Ass, I should think. Um, and it's looking like, to me at least, another Anton. So most likely Antoninus Pius or perhaps even Marcus Aurelius or Hadrian. One of those three. Anyway, let's have a look at it. So I'm going to be cleaning it up later. And I think it's, that's the way up it is. So there's a crown there. So you can see the head and you can see the bust. Which bust? Hard to tell right now. But I should think it's going to be Antonius Pius. And on the other side, you can see this detail there, can't you? Now I'm going to use my new cleaning technique, which is actually to soak it in oil, not for long, just to lift the dirt off. And it doesn't take away the patina, it doesn't take away the copper solubles, i.e. things like, uh, I think, copper carbonate, copper sulfate, which will actually just dissolve in water, which is why you tend to lose a lot of detail if you just wash them. But oil doesn't seem to do that. So we'll find out later what is on that side of the coin. first coin of the day and it's right by the car have a look and there it is where'd it go there it is you probably can't see that too well but it's there Ooh. let me just go down and get it and there it is it's a double turn noir or a single denier dude rub the denier and as you just saw, it's like four paces away from the car. Good start. I'm going up to the Roman lamppost. I'm taking a different route. I'm only going to be here an hour. So it's four o'clock and it must be 100 degrees Celsius out here. So I'm only going to be out here for an hour before I turn into a shriveled prune. So I've been detecting for a bit. So what you'll see next is what happened when I got out of the car. But I didn't want to do an introduction because I didn't think I was going to be out here that long and I maybe wasn't going to find anything. But anyway, we've got two things now, so here's my introduction. Anyway, by the way, got a new hat on today. I'm not sponsored by Maserati, but they could. We've got the first Spindle World of the day. Let's get the model fit together. So there we go, Spindle World. And this came out as 65, which is lead. And I had a 65 earlier and it was a shotty. I don't find many of them normally. So there we are, a spindle well. And over there is the Roman lamppost, about 50 yards away. So I'm heading over there and we're gonna go crisscross, crisscross and see if I can find any more of that lovely Roman. Could be a shot bullet, could be a seal, who knows? Don't think it's a thing, but it might be if it cleans up. Might be a pattern there, but probably not. Well, apparently that was an hour and a half in the blazing sun at 100 degrees Celsius. And I must say, whew, I'm tired. But one and a half hours just went, pew, gone. I didn't find anything. Well, you saw what I found, a spindle whirl and a denier or double turn whirl or whatever. But no more roaming but I just can't help believing when they plough up soon, I'm gonna find quite a few more coins. And having said that, I won't find any, of course, but I'm very, very hopeful. Now, the one I found yesterday has come up beautifully, beautifully, beautifully. And I've been, you know, working on it with basically a pin, which might sound strange. You're gonna stretch the coin. Well, yes, you do. But the way that it works is that when you run the pin over, if it's smooth, you don't leave a mark. And if it hits something rough, and it kind of looks like earth when it scratches over it, that's where you work away at. And you just chip, 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 chip away at it, tiny piece at a tiny piece, and the pattern is revealed. And that's what I've been doing. And here it is. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe.
please like and to all those people that give me coffee thank you very very much it's the only thing that keeps me going to be honest I mean with my YouTube royalties what little there are Uncle Sam takes 25% now oh yes so I'm buying Uncle Sam coffees quite a few well not really that many but you know they keep them awake at night I'm sure um, but anyway so thank you coffee buyers you're the difference between me and this video and no video at all because it touches me and it pushes me on even though you know it's um, not particularly material financially psychologically spiritually it means a lot to me this is one of my favorite metal detecting jokes and it is this shows I'm not the only nut in the field first coin of the day and it's a tiny one and it was quite deep and I've got like four inches of stubble to go over the top of but anyway got the coin have a look it's a tiny thing I'm not sure what it is I'm not even sure it's French but let's have a look well there it is and you see there's a head there let's do a little bit of zoomage and that's a head and I don't know whose head it is to be honest it it doesn't look like it's Marianne, but it could be. But it's a very tiny coin, so I'm not even sure what it would be. A one centime or equivalent of somewhere else. Could, of course, be silver, because they are small. But if it is, it's, you know, uh, not pure silver, because it would come out shiny if it was. So I'm guessing it's a one centime of somebody or other. We'll find out later. Let's just say I'm expecting this to be a piece of trash. Because if I say what I'm hoping it's going to be, it won't happen, will it? No, no, we know that. And for every one you see of me digging up a piece of trash that I was hopeful for, there's nine you don't see. So anyway, down here, I've got an interesting signal, which is obviously going to be rubbish. But let's see what happens when we dig it up. And I'm thinking it's under here. But you never know till you know. Now I'm trying to do this in much lighter shoes than I normally do. Because I've got a feeling that those big boots don't do my extremities any good but you never know do you anyway i'm hoping that's out it is and that's 81 right there i was just getting my camera holder in a safe place now let's see where it is and that is the magic that is the magic. It's got to be, isn't it? It's got to be. Let me put my pin pointer away. Oh, maybe not. I don't know why it is. I mean, it should be a Roman coin, but it's looking like a bottle top. Oh, oh, oh no, I don't believe it. Because right there, two Roman coins, is by my Roman lamppost. And it gave me a, an 82, which they were giving me. And it's round and it's thick, like a Roman. And it's an old bottle top. But I'm going to put it in my pocket just in case it's something else. But, oh, oh, oh no. Oh, oh, oh. I don't believe that. I really don't. Well, that was two hours. One little coin. But, you know... Oh, the stubble, oh, oh, the stubble, the stubble. But what can you do about the stubble? It's there. The farmer's gonna plow this, I guess, and, and harrow it, or whatever he does it is magic. And it'll be lovely flat for me, and I'll be able to get out on it, and I'll be able to find the other, well, I found two coins with probably two or three inches of Deus two under the surface. Well, let's just put it this way, four or five inches of stubble, and without the stubble, four or five inches more depth, which should mean that I should get at least another couple Romans, which I've got, which has been on top of the stubble. And I shall find a lot, lot more. In fact, hugely more. So that's what I'm looking forward to. And I'm just out there on the off chance. This is my excited face, my very, very excited face. I'm on a new field. And, well, come and see what I found. Now, I think this is going to be a Cistercius. It could be a two sole, actually. Could be too so, but I'm reckoning that's a Cistercius. Incredible, as my mate Brad would say. No, it's too so.
but you know, 1792, I shouldn't complain. I've got a new field, exciting new field, and I'm off to explore it. It's probably gonna have nothing in it, but you never know till you know. It's first find of the day. It's not a coin, it's a patoni, but I think it could be a really nice one. Have a look. I've been on here about 25 minutes, one tiny little signal of a bit of copper, nothing else apart from really deep iron that even I gave up digging after about a foot and a half. <laughs> nice signal, but it had to be iron. Have a look at this. Actually, that looks very coin-like. This is a really nice pattern on there. Really nice pattern. Yes, well, that's a really nice button. And it could be a hammered out coin, I think. That's a guess. But it might just be that. We'll find out later. If so, it could even be silver, of course. But it won't be. This is my new permission. It's a huge field over here. It's got nothing in it, not even any iron. And I've come up to the top of it because I thought maybe someone would want to build up here because it's kind of like quite run up for defensive purposes. But yeah, obviously water is more important. And water is right down there in the valley. So I guess the thought of having to lug your way up and down here with a few gallons of water every day was more than they could bear. But anyway, there's a weird wall here. Let me show you. See that? There's a road here. It comes in. And it goes around there. It goes around this, which I think might have had a house in it. Maybe, maybe not, don't know. I'll find out in a minute. I'll find out in a minute because I'll detect in front of it and if there's anybody here for any sort of time and there'll be a couple of coins. So probably not a house there after all. But this embankment's kind of weird. Maybe they wore this road away. I don't know, maybe there's something that wanted a one and a half foot defensive wall. Don't know. Anyway, I'm up here now, I'll catch my breath, and then I'm gonna search around the top here, then I'm gonna go back, and I'm going to kick it in, because I've been an hour now going uphill, and it's, um, I didn't think it's gonna be hot, but actually it must be 30 anyway. That's Celsius, which in America is double it and add 30, so 90, maybe a bit less than that, 85, 90. But anyway, catch my breath underneath the sunflowers or with my hat on backwards like a true American labourer and uh, yes and then push on so so far a little strip of copper and a really nice button and nothing else not a dicky bird well this is the first one of these I've ever found a coin have a look so that if I'm not mistaken is a 10 franc coin from, oh, I don't know, sort of 1990-something. So it's equivalent of a euro these days, although probably three euros with inflation. And, uh, yeah, I just found that in this pathway where I've been sat. Big old signal as well. Anyway, never found a 10-franc coin before. Spent a few back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Unexpected, that one. It's another one. There you go, 10 francs. And another. So that's 30 francs. Which actually is, was money back then. You know, that's like 10 bucks. Anyway, yes. Yes, 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 we like it. In the pocket it goes. Thought it's a bit of rubbish, but I don't think it is. Have a look. So it actually bent on the end there. You can see why. But it's a bit of bronze. And this is the interesting bit coming up next. There's that pin on the back there. It was fixed onto something. But not very hard. Just a little dimple there. So anyway, if you know what it is, please tell me. If you know, post below. If you have an idea, post it down here. The first proper find of the day, a crotal bell. Well, half of one anyway. So that's nice. We like it.
interesting hunt. Didn't find much. 30 francs from 1995 or something. Crotal Bell and a couple of mystery items looking like some sort of, um, I don't know really, some sort of armour? Can't be really, can it? But anyway, we will find out later. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe and like. Be back soon. Well, I'm back on that field where the farmer's farmer, the farmer's peasant, I've got the old peasants here, peasant, the young farmer lost his car keys. And I gave it a try on the day, but it's so hot. I mean, it was like 100. So I gave it an hour and then I thought I'm gonna die or I need to stop. So I stopped. But anyway, I came back and they'd actually seeded it. So I didn't want to go on it if it's seeded. So I went back to the farmer and said, can I go on it to look for those keys? And he said, yeah, sure, no worries. So anyway, just got out the car. So this is by the car, first find of the day. And it's a lovely thing, have a look. Well, I think it's a lovely thing. It's a little ring. Yes, it's a little, it's a little farmer's ring. So there it is, a little farmer's ring, copper. To think that that was a real keepsake for somebody. Tiny little copper ring of no copper at all, just made into a little finger ring. Ah, very cute. So I'm using the Deus 1 with the high frequency coil and I love this. I've got the Deus 2 which I love too but this is so much lighter that I can go for quite a long time more and it finds things like that ring. It was about a foot down and I think it's the bottom of a boot but it might not be. It's a copper plate of some kind. And there it is. I think that's the bottom of a boot. But it was copper and I snapped it in half with my spade. And yeah, I think that goes in the bag, not in the pocket. Well. I just got one of those cruel finds you get from now and again. But before I go and show it to you, I'm going to say I'm using the Pocket 2 from DJI, which is a tiny little camera, really, really small, really, really good, really, really useful, and makes lovely shots. You're seeing what it does now, and you've been seeing for the last few weeks. But I had to have my doubts on its robustness, because, you know, I'm out in the field, everywhere's dusty, you're going to drop it, etc., etc., etc. And this is like a high-precision, gimbly thing. You know, it's kind of got lots of moving parts. So I thought, get a bit of dust in there, boom. Oh well, you know, it was worth a try. But anyway, it's held up, so it's pretty robust because I've dropped it several times and I've put it in a bag full of dust and it's covered in dust and it's dusty and in a box it's dusty and it's still going fine. I'm really, really impressed. I was not expecting it to survive more than say half a dozen goes, but it's still working and have you said that, it'll break immediately. But anyway, so far so good. Well done DJI, you've got a great bit of kit here. Anyway, have a look at my disappointing find. So you can see, that's what I saw first of all. Ah, oh, silver coin! But it appears to be a button. I don't know for sure yet, but I'm pretty sure enough that it's a button. It's like a jean button, which is chromium plated. But anyway, I'm going to put it in the pocket just in case it turns out to be a silver coin, which it isn't. So here we have a nice little button. So a naval button, I'm guessing, with the anchor on it. And I'd say that's 1850-ish. So that's It's a very quiet field, this. Anyway, I've got a bag seal. Have a look. There you go. Probably a poop seal. Or a seed seal. One of the two, probably seed. Oh, hold on a minute. Is that... Let's have a look. Guessing it's seeds, but uh, we might know later. Well, I say it's a field of nothing, but it's actually the field of crumpled aluminium and lead foil. So it's worse than a field of nothing. But I've got a little thing here, don't know what it is. Could be a coin, very, very, very faulty signal. Have a look. There's almost no weight to that at all. A bit snapped off. I think it might be a coin. Crummy old coin if it is, but you never know. It could be old, could be very rare, who knows? But anyway, in the pocket it goes. This is my excited face, my semi excited face. And I got a nice find in here after, I don't know, a couple of hours finding nothing but tin foil and bits of cans, you know, cancel and all that, as you Americans call it. So anyway, I've come round to the part of the field which I think is a road according to the crop marks. And it goes 
by those trees and you see there's a gateway there so it's still a road even though the road's gone it's still got the same entrance which is why it's always by the car because they're normally really historic entrances and obviously it's had the most traffic is the actual gateway i'm here hoping to find something off the road because this whole thing is just empty so maybe the road goes up here so i've got a signal and i've got a nice find and it's in my hand now you know what it is as soon as you see it but it's a really old one and there you are that is a very very old spindle well this is a medieval one i can't even get the mud out from it but this style is medieval whereas the ones i often find the so-called celtic ring money is actually probably 1700s but this is going to be 1500s 1400s even older than that and i'll get back to you when i push the dirt out of it well i push the dirt out of it but you can already see it's going to have nice little patterns on it it could all be handmade probably or at least quite a bit of effort was put into doing it so that would be a precious item he came down that road or she came down that road and dropped the spindle worm sometime five six seven hundred years ago that's going to be a bag seal i would say seed or poop so far a ring and a spindle whirl and seals that was a nice two and a half hours worth of exercise with one well two nice finds a lovely copper medieval ring i just find very very cute and a medieval spindle whirl and i will look up and see what sort of period it's from but i'm guessing 13 1400s maybe earlier but uh, we'll see when we look it up on the old interwebs now people have been asking me about my diet well i'm now 101.3 kilos down from 112 and a half so it's a good part of 25 pounds lighter and the idea is every other day fasting so eat normally one day don't eat the next day eat normally the day after don't eat the day after that now on the days you don't eat you can have a little bit to eat i mean a salad but basically it's best not to have anything rather than to start to kind of go on the road of cheating um i like to have a glass of wine before i go to bed because it helps me sleep but anyway after a period of a couple of weeks um you kind of lose that voracious appetite that keeps you awake at night and you know you lose your appetite quite a lot really and it's only occasional days when you're that hungry you wish that you weren't on a diet it's really good because you know every other day you can eat and you only have to last to midnight if you really want to have a snack after midnight you can so you just eat normally on the normal days so i started that june 1st it's now august the 20th and i'm down to 101.3 from 112 and a half so yeah you can work out the numbers yourself that's pretty impressive three months and i'm down 11 kilos call it 25 pounds now i've got to get down to 85 kilos to be kind of you know proper weight and 85 to 90 kilos is really my target now the good thing about intermittent fasting also is that you know you get under 90 and you get down to 85 and then you relax a little bit and you put a bit on and you're getting back out to 87 88 89 well then when you get to a part of the range you don't like you go back onto intermittent fasting and you don't have to do anything special you just don't eat one day and eat the next so there's no need for special foods calorie counting messing about you just say oh i was down to 85 i'm now 91 so i'm gonna go on to intermittent fasting to i'm back down to 85 or 86 or 87 or whatever so you just switch on and switch it off there's no need to do anything clever no need to buy any special foods or special dietary supplements or anything that is the plan and so far so good so another three months maybe another 10 kilos so then i'll be down to 91 i'll nearly be there and it'll be getting up well, it'll actually be past christmas so maybe when i get down to 95 i'll have a christmas break and then i'll go on to intermittent fasting again so the intermittent fasting is really good because it's very very simple very very straightforward you know where you are you know when not to cheat you know when you can eat and away you go it's working for me and i've been fighting my weight for quite a long time now in fact probably you know 15 years and this is the first time i feel like i'm getting anywhere without having to mess about and in a simple easy to follow way so anyway that's my update thank you very much for watching see you again soon bye now